This is your Destiny Calls, and I am your host, Pastor Ursula Murphy. I'm so excited about today and having you tuned in to the telecast. God is going to do some phenomenal things during our time together. I have a very special guest, my co-host and co-producer here with me on today, amen, my very own husband, Apostle Sylvester Murphy, amen. And I am extremely excited about the word of the Lord that we're getting ready to bring to you on today. The topic today is how to create wealth. We're living in such a time where there's shortage and famish, famine and a lack of this and that and many people are suffering with financial stresses. So the Lord impressed upon our hearts to come to you today and to bless you with this message entitled How to Create Wealth. Amen. So I want you to receive Apostle Sylvester Murphy at this time. Well, I'm excited about being here. Thank you, honey. And uh, I'm just going to just give you four pointers that's going to bring about phenomenal increase in your economy, in your pocketbook. Mm -hmm. These four things are going to bless you. Number one, you need to be w rich and revealed and applied word of God. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying that rich in the applied word of God? Because so many times we think that we need to be, be rich and God is not mad at us or have a problem with us being rich. But in Proverbs, I'm mean, sorry, in Psalms 19, and we want to look at verses number seven through 10, and it reads these words. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart, and commandments of the Lord is pure. Enlighten the eyes, the fear of the Lord is clear, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Check this out. Moreover, to be desired are they than gold, yea, much fine gold, sweeter than honey, than the honeycomb. So in other words, we are to esteem the word more than we crave just wanting to get rich. Because if you're looking for a qu quick, rich, get idea, you're probably going to be poor. Right now I'm in a series in theology and I'm teaching really on this subject on biblical finance. And it gives us the concept that right now, that if you're looking to be rich, you'll probably end up poor. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to increase in wealth, right now you need to get a richness, a hunger for the word. You need to esteem his word more than natural things or food as they say. Amen. Amen. You know, the word of God teaches us and gives us all kinds of principles on how to, you know, establish our finances. And that's what's so good about the Word because you can go to the Word and the Word uh, is full of the principles of God that teaches us how to get wealth and how to prosper and how to live well, you know, because it's the will of the Father. Uh, he wish above all things that we prosper and be in hell even as our souls prosper. So it is God's will for us to prosper and to do well. So, you know, he said this, and, and I want to cap on uh, what he's talking about here. He said the rich and the revealed applied Word of God. The scripture that came to mind with me, it was Joshua 1 and 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, and that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein, for then shall we make our way prosperous and then shall we have good success. And so we see here that the word of God, if we meditate on the word, if we keep the word before our eyes, if we keep the word in our mouth, if we spend time in the presence of God, that the, ver the very word of God is able to prosper us. He Amen. says, then shall you make your way prosperous and then shall you have good success. So I think that that's important. Amen. And that's, that's the way that we can prosper and create wealth for our lives. So now let's look at number two. Amen. Well, number two says, if you wish to uh, create wealth, you need this one. If you don't have this one, this will halt your success of being wealthy. Mm -hmm. Number two is wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. Why are you saying wisdom and understanding? Because I know people that do get money and they all of a sudden, because they don't have wisdom or understanding, they blow the money. Mm. They end up doing crazy things. How many of you know many times people have won the lottery and through statistics, about seven years later, they're broke, their families are destroyed. And I mean, it brought more damage than it brought good. Mm -hmm. But the 
scripture declares if we want to create wealth, let's look at the scriptures and we're going to see how. Mm -hmm. And it's according to Proverbs 3 and 13. Mm -hmm. So we see in the word of God that the word of God gives us concepts of how we go about creating wealth. And whenever we get hold of the word of God, we says, listen at this in Proverbs 3 and 13 says, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Listen at this. After you find wisdom in the man that get it understanding. Mm -hmm. So if you are happy as a man finding wisdom, you're going to be create wealth. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you got to have wisdom how to handle money. Because if you don't have the wisdom or the understanding, you will make foolish decisions and you'll blow it on things that you shouldn't blow it on. Mm -hmm. Who else in the Bible that we can look at? We can also look in 1 Kings, the third chapter, where it talks about a great man and it's David's son by the name of King Solomon. So let's look at that one. It also gives us some enlightenment that we want to see just in scripture. I'm just trying to give you a, a picture of how to bring about change to your family. In 1 Kings, the third chapter, it talks about, in verse 9, he asks for wisdom. When God appeared to Solomon after he offered up his money, his sacrifices, and God asked Solomon a question, what is it that you want? And Solomon asked the question, he said, Lord, I want understanding to know how to go out and come against your people. So in other words, I need some wisdom how to deal with this great company of people. And God said, now check this out. God says, since thou did not ask, listen to this, since you did not ask for a long life, or neither did you ask for riches or the, and did thyself, thou ask a life of thy enemy, but thou ask for thyself understanding to discern the judgment. And the Bible says that the Lord say, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, wise in understanding, but I'm going to give you the richness of also how to handle the money. And he was known as the wisest man to ever live besides Jesus. So right now, not even Bill Gates can compare to King Solomon's wealth. Wow. Oh, that's wow. powerful. Wow. Amen. Wow. You know, and so to think that he could have asked for anything, but wow. he asked for wisdom right. because what's the use to having money if you don't know what to do with the money. That's good. There's no use in, and many people fail. A lot of us get the opportunity to get money. We, we, God does bless us, but our problem is poor management, and poor management is because of a lack of wisdom. So there's no sense in you being uh, wealthy if you don't know what to do with the wealth that God has given us. Amen? So then I, I was thinking about this scripture, Proverbs 13 and 20. It says this, he that walketh with wise men <laughs> shall be wise. So, you know, wisdom can come even, even from connections, the people that you are connected to. You That's ought to be good. connected to somebody, amen, that can impart the wisdom in, in your life, amen, and to give you the principles and the tools of God. That's why church is important, being connected to a local house where the Word of God is going forth, so you can get the kind of tools that you need to maintain the wealth, amen. So, then, let's go to number three. Amen. Before we go to number three, okay. I just I want to add, right now, many of us, we call it, some of us, we call it happy time, income tax are coming. Yeah. Let God give you wisdom mm -hmm. with that type of money that he's going to release because I believe that this is the year of double measure and also of accumulation. As God is going to bless you in this year, I believe you're going to definitely need some wisdom and some understanding. Number three, if you're going okay. to create the wealth for this year, listen at this. Number three, you need a good name. Oh, wow. glory to God. Wow. A good name. Can wow. somebody say a good name? A good name. That's Amen. Good. My mama taught me this concept. <laughs> Amen. I learned this from my mother. My mother taught me that how important it is to have a good name. Amen. Pay your bills on time. <laughs> and if you pay your bills on time, you can go to the bank and get anything you need. <laughs> and one thing about my mother, which bless her heart, she's in heaven, that one thing she blessed me with, she could just walk in the store in the bank. She didn't even have the sign. Just her presence of her name wow. got her what she want. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, she was the first one to help us get our home, and I bless God for that. Even when we got ready to build our first ministry, my mom sighed. Could you believe that? Yes, she did. But listen to this. In Proverbs 22, <laughs> in verse 1, states these words, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and love and favor rather than silver and gold. Wow. Now listen to this. He says that your name is so valuable 
that is it's more valuable than great riches, mm -hmm. more than favor, than silver or gold. Your name mm -hmm. carries something. Wow. Your name is so powerful, you need your name. And I'm telling you now, even if you have made foolish decisions, and you know many of us, we have, and what we need to do, it ain't that we have a money problem that's going to solve our finances. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we can throw money at it just like our system of the world. Right now, they're trying to put more money in the system. What this world really need, I'm going to give you the answer, is a good old-fashioned repentance. <laughs> when we repent from the Amen. foolish decisions we Amen. made and become obedient and believe the Word of God, then we'll see God begin to turn our finances around mm -hmm. right side up. That's what we need, a good name. Amen. Wow, wow. And you know, a good name is, uh, it's not its not just having a good name in the credit bureau, mm -hmm. you know, but we need a good name in business. We wow. need good names uh, in the church because mm. many, many believers, <laughs> you know, they love the Lord, but their reputation is not too good. <laughs> we need good names in the community, you know, so uh, it's not just having your name good, but what kind of reputation are you establishing? How do people know you? See, that's very important. Can, can you be trusted? You know, because when a person has a good name, good. then people know that they can trust them. Amen. And Amen. and it's sad to say that many believers, you know, uh, our reputation is bad. We're known for borrowing money and not paying back. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> you know, you hit we're, that one out the yeah. <laughs> I mean, Amen. really, we're known for mismanaging our money, not paying our bills. The Lord and gonna bless kind. us. The Lord you know, gonna do it. Yeah, we, depending upon it? the supernatural all the time. But and we know God is a super supernatural God. He yes, does he supernatural is. things. But God honors integrity. Yes, he See, does. and having a good name means that I'm a person of integrity. Amen. You know, there's no deceit. There's no deception. Wow. There's no lying, sneaking, conniving. That's you know, That's my good. reputation. So how is it? Some of you got family members that don't trust you. Come on. Amen. No. You know, you have a bad reputation. <laughs> I mean, when they see you coming, they say, oh, boy, here she comes. I wonder what she wants. <laughs> So you've got to value your name. You've got to place honor on your name. You know, become a person of integrity so God can bless you. I believe that's the way God blesses us when he knows he can trust us. And sometimes God is not going to release wealth into the hands of people that can't be trusted. You know, he's not going to give wealth to people like the Bible says, those talents that were giving out one man when buried his talent. He's not going to put wealth in the hands of somebody who doesn't have the wisdom to know what to wow. do with what God has given them. You know, amen. So you got to value your name. That's your reputation. Amen. And people are going to know you by the person that you really are. So a good name is very important. Amen. Well, let's go to number four. Well, before we do, let's kind of okay. backtrack. Mm -hmm. I, I want to dive into it, but I, I really want to look in the story of 2 Kings, and it gives us some enlightenment okay. of how important a good name is since we're, we're dealing with the mm -hmm. subject. And it talks about a certain woman. Now, that's what I love about the Bible. It always gives us emphasis on certain people of the Bible that had a great reputation. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, verse 1, it says, Now there cried a certain woman, it's always a woman, mm -hmm. this, of the wives of the sons of the prophets of Elisha. In other words, her husband was in the school of the prophets, okay. powerful ministry, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor cometh to take him, my two sons, to be bondmen. Now understand, they had times where they also, in biblical times, that they had people where they went borrow money. Mm -hmm. Now in that day and time, her sons was finna become bondmen. In other words, they were gonna become servants to someone to pay her debt. Mm -hmm. In other words, she went put her son's name up oh. for a credit. She went to the credit place and said, listen, y'all give me some money to help me out. My husband did, so I need to pay my credit. Oh, so what wow. happened, she oh, didn't wow. have the money to pay the credit. Yeah. And the time came yeah. a year later that she didn't have the money. So now she's in a sticky situation. And now that they're coming to take her sons and make them bondsmen, and this is what she did. Wow. She went to the man of God. Isn't it always amazing wow. how we go to the man of God and we get in a financial yeah, situation? Yeah. Sometimes that's what you need to do. 